theft. We are live at the CSI Pro Arena in the Grand Ballroom of the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino. The Q Sports International Expo featuring the BCA Pool League World Championships, the USA Pool League National Championships, and of course, Diamond Las Vegas Open 10 Ball. Here we are with 128 players, double elimination, race to seven, alternate break, world standardized rules with no early 10 balls. Uh, this is a second round winner's side match with James Aranas and Chris Smelling, uh, Jeremy Jones in the booth, along with myself, George Teachea, bringing you the live action. Yeah, and two of uh, Predator, Predator players here with Chris Melling mm -hmm. and James Aranas. It's pretty much all Predator. We got Predator lights, Predator cloth, uh, both playing with Predator cues. Uh, you can see that BK rush right there on the table. Yeah, Michaela Tab is our referee mm -hmm. for for this match. Probably no one has more experience uh, refereeing Q sports than her. Yeah, she is. Uh, and she was rather impressed coming here. With her pool background, she walked into this room, uh, this grand ballroom, and she says, wow, I'm impressed. I'm excited. Okay, not backing off the break at all. And James is a guy that studies the break, has all the different types of breaks. Um, so him really unloading into this first one tells me that he doesn't want to take a chance at something lighter not working. Uh, so not only at, with the heavy speed, you can play the balls that you normally would, but you also get more movement, and you may, may make one of the balls you don't expect. Nice starter here. Doesn't want to get too thin on the two ball, though, so whether he has to play a little longer distance away from the two, um, that's okay as long as he stays kind of full on it. He doesn't, like I said, doesn't want to get thin on the two. Jeremy, how do you go about avoiding the nine ball here? Well, you maybe you just play rail. past yeah. the nine, or he may play. See, the three has both pockets also, so he's going to swing two rails and take a little longer shot okay. on the two. And the reason he can handle thin on the two, because the left side of the table is clear. So now he can run the cue ball up and maybe into a similar position it's at now for the three. We'll see. Well, see, that's great that you pointed that out, because I, I, I look at the table, and with my experience, I like to attack, and I wanted to attack from the right side. Mm -hmm. And he's, he went to the left side just because he did not want to run into the nine, I assume. Yeah, run into any of those yeah, balls. Of those uh, balls. Uh, whether it was shooting the one first and running into the nine or shooting the two and have to worry about the ten and the eight. Mm -hmm. um, so here he may have to elevate, or if he can beat the side, he'll just go with the top left and play a little bit short side on the four. I don't expect him to swing it like two rails hard trying to get on the four uh, for a little easier shot. Mm -hmm. This nice, is nice. Nice angle, yeah, exactly. Now James, uh, who always played with low deflection, uh, well, not always actually, but for a, a minute, but he's new to the Predator. He just signed mm -hmm. with them not long ago. But he's a guy that puts in a lot of time on the table. So I don't expect him making that little adjustment to a new cue is going to bother him much. You got a good shot of Chris Smelling there uh, looking over his opponent, seeing how he's moving around, getting a feel for how James might be feeling. Okay, he went past that. And, and we talked about that in the last match. You notice how the beeps went off, mm -hmm. and it went past the five beeps, but it wasn't a foul because he was down on the ball okay. already. Uh, Michaela Tab uh, putting her hand up to recognize that and let everyone know that it was a fi uh, you know legal shot. Mm hmm now, if the guys get back up off that shot, it instantly becomes a foul. Shot clock violation. Now, this nine ball being on the rail is a funny shot. Easy to pull it off when you're trying to come back with the cue ball. So we'll see how thin he elects to play. And I like that angle myself. A lot of people would say, man, let me get heavier. Well... Yeah actually comes off the rail a little easier when you get heavier because you have to hit the ball with more speed to make it come back. It's a little easier when you get the angle. <coughs> yes, yeah, okay. yes, yeah. As long as you don't mind, you know, having to throw the mm -hmm. ball a little bit with English, you know, it's not, it's not the most comfortable shot, but it's actually a little easier. And that's what happens, though. It's easy to pull it off the rail. And he never expected to miss that, but his cue ball, well, because of the, he, he didn't hit it where he actually wanted to, his mm -hmm. cue ball traveled further than it should have. So Chris Melling with an opportunity here that
probably wasn't expected. Mm -mm. He's going to move the ball here. These guys don't miss on the last two balls very often. Wow, that's got a oh. lot of speed. Watch out, cue ball. Wow, he would have oh never dreamed that was Lord. even possible. What a turn of events there. Great opportunity for Chris, uh, only to have it uh, go down the drink. And James gets his opening break. Yeah, I would, first game. I, I would bet Chris was more worried about the three-rail sc scratch in the side more often than the three-rail scratch in mm -hmm. the corner. Well, it's his break, and he's... Uh, He's taking a little talking to himself in his head, I think. He's just sitting in there, staring at the table, wondering how he did what he did. Well, Michaela Tab, I'm sure, addressing that situation with the shot clock uh, that was, I believe, during the eight ball, may have been the seven. And Chris was, I guess, waiting for her to, to finish up. I thought maybe he was talking to himself there, uh, settling his mind down. Yeah, and probably a bit of both. Uh, we are sponsored by Diamond Billiard Products, Kamui, Rio, All Suites Hotel and Casino, JB Cases, Omega. This is the Q Sports International Expo. We have vendors of every sort here in the Grand Ballroom. Uh, you can get your Q cleaned, everything you need to have done with it. We have repair guys here. We have Omega Billiards with all kinds of uh, products and a couple other vendors. Uh, Predators here. Uh, just about um, everything you want in pool is right here. And now here you have Chris Melling drilling the ball right into the side pocket, the cue ball. It loses it. Two shots, two scratches. Yeah, and both of them. Uh, you know, the first one, again, I, I think I could give you all day to try and scratch three rails off that <laughs> angle he had on, on the nine. It's very, mm -hmm. very difficult. Mm -hmm. Something he probably, he said, saying to himself, as long as I get past that side, really no way to scratch. But you this one this one was all on him. Exactly. You got to fly at it. Yeah. I, I'd say you have to fly at it like that. You have to get that ball down. You don't want to take the chance of being short. Yeah, you have to fly at it. Now, I'm wondering, can, can he shoot the one in the other corner and go right between the 4-9 to that spot on the side rail down here to get on the 2? That's what I would look at. Rather than going across the table between the 4-8, if I could set up the cue ball naturally to play it in the other corner and just go right by the 4-9 with no problems. Yeah, now, right if that's between them. Yeah, sure. if that's I like not, that. Now, if that's not available, maybe the 4 sticking out a little too much. Mm-hmm. But that's a little easier path than trying to navigate between these balls. Still not hard for these guys, but mm -hmm. and well done. He had several ways to get to where he's at, and you you mentioned the what I thought was a good way. The el the other thing was the way he did it, one rail, and then there was also the two rail that's going to have you cross the center of the table. That's going to get you right there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he had a couple of ways. And I think you're, you know, Chris, of course. A great player and a guy that's still going to be around the game for, mm -hmm. for some time, uh, approaching 40 years old, I believe. But um, yeah. James certainly uh, one of the guys that's the future of the game. Sure. Chris is actually 41. You oh, were right 41. There. Okay. Yeah. He was born in 79, end of January. And George has always got all the all information. All the cool facts. Yeah, I try to, you know, people want to know, so I try to give them what they want. Uh, they, they want to know the player's age, what they're playing with. These are things that I pick up here and there that, uh, you know, people that know I do commentary will ask for and say, yes, this is what I want. I, why don't you say this? Why don't you do And when they make a good suggestion, I try to uh, deliver. Well, great kill stroke right there delivered uh, <laughs> by James Aronis. And it's amazing and pulls so difficult in so many ways. But when you're close to the ball, how much you can really uh, manufacture things. Okay, a little funny angle here, right? Is he going towards the 10 with the cue ball? Uh, I think he so follows right by it. Okay. Takes a little longer shot on yeah. the seven. No, I think he's going to hit the bottom rail and go up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, following a little straight, so he'll draw back for the eight in the side. Another funny nine ball, meaning he has to get pretty good on the nine uh, to not get a funny angle going into that point. Because, uh, you know, if you get a little too much angle, you can't draw past the side. But if there's not enough angle, it's hard to make it bounce across the table mm -hmm. for the 10. Sure. 
So probably going to try and set up full here, I would think. I'd like to stop right where the eight is? Uh, I mean, you is can that go that. I mean, if I do play angle, I want a lot. But you mm -hmm. see he can't really stop, right? Yeah, so no, he's he probably going to roll forward to full here and just draw his ball back. You know, anywhere past the sides, a pretty reasonable cut sure. on the 10. Oh, well, he's looking at drawing to the end rail. I like him just rolling this in, really. You kind of looked at him. Uh, Is he I going three you, rails? No. I thought okay. he was just going to roll to the to the straight in shot and draw it straight back. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Roll, roll to full on mm -hmm. this ball and, and realize you don't have to get all the way back to the end rail. This is where you work through the rack, meaning take just drawing back to the middle diamond maybe or something like that. Pretty easy cut shot on the 10. Chris rather. Oh, didn't oh, want to do that. Oh, he overcut it to the corner. Didn't want to do that. Do you take the bank here, Jeremy? I do. I do myself. I, mean, I, I, I tend to agree. I really. I, at I, this uh, level at this here. Level, the, yeah. uh, as well as these guys bank. Uh, or even if the cut he likes. Whatever he likes, I think he goes offensive. Uh, it looks like the cut to me. Looks, yeah, that's what he looks like he's doing. He got in behind it. so. Second time he's worked down the last two balls. A tale of two stories in the first two games, meaning... Uh, Kind of a drastic mistake by both. Mm -hmm. Interesting. We've got some great matches going on around us. Uh, we got uh, Mika Imanen and uh, Koping uh, Chung, I think it is. Little is it Little Ko? No, Koping Yi is the older. Yeah. Koping Chung uh, is the. I can't younger. tell from here. It is Little Co. And uh, and then you got Max, uh, Maximilian Lechner and Shane Van Boney. And Maximilian Lechner, who I'm sure last time in Vegas had some great results yeah. winning the U.S. Open 10 ball. Mm -hmm. Went got through a stellar field there. Yes, he did. Good shot of the crowd. You have uh, oh, John Morrow left us. He was sitting back there. On the row there, right behind Chris Smelling. And John Moore is going to play uh, Justin Bergman at this round on oh. the winner's side. They're waiting on a table that's a little delayed from the previous round. Okay. okay. A strong break. A very strong break. Two balls down. Uh, good shot on the one. He might be a little elevated on the six. Mm, yeah, it looks like he is. He is, and it, it really makes a difference on, mm -hmm. if, you know, it's a little thin to easily roll across and stay underneath the three. Um, and it's hard to come back for that three seven combination being elevated. So I think he rolls this in. I don't think after that last miss he wants to really dig on the cue mm -hmm. ball here. If he just rolls it in, you have a nice shot at that seven if he wants it, and then just push, put the three ball in front of the pocket. No, he'll go all the way for the three. Yeah, and he's perfect just to mm -hmm. come down between the 410, I believe. Well, he's a little straighter, he, so he's got to stun it just a hair. And this on the new felt, what happens when you stun this, you actually get a little more out of it, mm -hmm. and you may even go into, like, the 10 and be a little steep on the four. Uh -huh. Um. I think he'll stun it. I don't think he can afford to roll this uh, and try and play short side. Okay, he was really straight. That's a great shot. The results there were excellent. Well, and also he knew he wasn't going to ever, like, give up the table. Mm -hmm. I'll just pull this with a light pinch past the six ball. That'll be a perfect angle to draw up for the off the five to the six. You can see the seven hanging over the side. Okay, pretty much stop, stop, stop from here. And he's lined up to do it. That was a good shot of, look at the eight ball right now, folks. You can see the eight ball, uh, the, 
reflection of the lights. Those brand new, gorgeous Predator lights. Yeah, I think they've got something with, with that. Yeah. Not only uh, the performance of the lights, but pretty attractive, too. Sure. And both these guys, the you know, we've seen the beeps on the shot clock a little bit, but both of them pretty, pretty fast players overall. And Chris Melling will rack the balls here in game number four. Try and keep you updated on some outer scores when we can. We can, yeah. Van Boney leads Lechner two to one. And co leads Himmelman three to one. He just turned the he just turned the flap. I, I can see the scoreboard. You have a little better. Just a little yeah, just a little. I can see three tables on that side and that's it. Um, yeah, these predator balls play very, very well. Um, I actually like the cue ball the way the little has all the little diamonds on it. Mm -hmm. I, I actually like that. Uh, I I like playing with the with the measle ball, but this is much more attractive to me. I played with them last year. I hit some balls last year, and they were great. And Chris has made a good break. He's made a ball, but not too much to work with on the one ball. No, no actually, a fortunate kiss on the cue ball. I believe he was heading towards that opposite <laughs> side that he scratched. He scratched, maybe making an adjustment, making sure he doesn't go towards the side he scratched on last mm -hmm. last time he broke, but. There's Dennis Arcuyo standing right behind Chris Smelling, along with Ariel, uh, is it Roy Francisco? Mm -hmm. I wonder if he plays this. Uh, that's what I was wondering. Try and come back behind the two or the five nine and take your chances on the one. Hope, hopefully, not making a ball he doesn't want to make. Okay. Is it coming out? It did. It did come out some, and he was just in a tough spot there. I thought he might try and bank the one, you know, kind of like a similar shot that Filler played in the last match. You know, bank the one down towards the balls and pull the cue ball back behind the two, not knowing exactly what's going to happen, but at least you get the cue ball nice eight or nine feet away from the one ball. Whoa. And they scratch. No. Spinning. Oh, it was spinning the right way. I think he's got to go cross corner here, huh, George? Can he afford to try and elevate or even roll this ball in? I think he can roll it with a little bit of speed. Yeah, I like going cross corner, I think, here. I think that's what he's called. I think that's the prudent play. Another angle that the one doesn't really want to hang. He either wants to get away from the po Oh, well, he didn't hit it how he wanted. So maybe when Chris gets his next opportunity, if I was in his corner, I would take my time out. Uh, I think i got to change the flow of things a little bit. Not so much in the match, but for myself. Mm -hmm. That little talking to he had to himself didn't work that well, huh? Well, yeah, and they're there for a reason. Uh, those timeouts are there for many reasons, too. Not People think it's just for a bathroom break or whatever, but I kind of look at it more as a tool mm -hmm. uh, to regroup. Um, Do you ever use them to kind of freeze your opponent? Uh, you know, without telling you de <laughs> details on that, yeah. <laughs> I was fortunate enough to travel with some pretty savvy guys when it came to that gamesmanship uh -huh. during a match. And, and a, yeah, um, whether it be an important kick shot you got to make, maybe after your opponent makes a mistake, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, put them, them on the cooker on a little. Yeah, make them dwell uh, on if, the you, if you know your opponent's that type of person, you know, you're not going to make Filler and Aranis and Melling and Shaw and all these guys really um, – those types of, uh, of things aren't really mm -hmm. going to work that much, right? It actually might work against you, meaning they'll get more comfortable with a little time. Okay. Um, but there are certain players I, I do believe uh, would beat themselves up. Okay, I, I wouldn't fool with this going forward. I would hold there uh, and take that little angle to move the cue ball off the six to the seven. Just because he doesn't have a full pocket, a little miss hit to the hole. I don't think you're going to miss it, but speed could get a little bad with the cue ball. So yeah, the main thing good. is the full pocket. You want to be real accurate here. And rolling the ball isn't the most accurate. 
The one thing he did is he backed it up an inch because he knows he's got to move it, right? Mm -hmm. So why not move it with an easier angle to move the ball rather than you know, a little an flatter? Angle, yeah. Exactly, and have to power through it instead of use the angle. Those are good points. I'm writing them all down. Uh, you know those things, George. And you do it without even thinking, but a lot of people yeah. don't yeah. recognize that kind of stuff on, on the amateur level sometimes. Exactly. I, I never realized uh, uh, how, you know, an instinctive player doesn't think about what he's doing. And I've been playing with one of my nephews, and he wants a lot of instruction. And he'll say, well, why'd you do it that way? And I'll sit there and go, oh, because that's just the way you, oh, then I have to think about the explanation. Yeah. But, you know, when you're down on the ball, you don't think about it. You just, you're just instinctive, and you just go for it. Yeah. And at one time, you did have to think about it. That's mm -hmm. the key. You mm -hmm. practice thinking about it for a period of time to where it just becomes natural, right? Mm -hmm. And I've noticed a couple heavy spin shots, like that 7 to the 8 a second ago, uh, where James didn't quite hit the pocket how he wanted. So I've seen a few to where maybe he's still getting used to his new cue a mm -hmm. little bit. Um, and he's a guy that doesn't use heavy spin all the time, but he will use it when it's needed. But he's got such a good timing in his swing that I don't think it'll take long at all for him to get used to what's going on with that cue. Mm -hmm. And and the, the main thing they have to adjust to when they're using the low deflection cues is the side spins. Yeah. Because the draw and follow is pretty pretty... Uh, I mean, that's what the cue is really. The power that it adds and brings to the table um, aids those shots. But it's, it's the finesse draw shots, uh, I mean, side spin shots that, that people For the most part, with. yeah. It just puts a higher spin rate. Mm -hmm. So I've actually been playing with a, a low deflection now the last few weeks, um, toying around with it. Mm -hmm. I actually love it and uh, uh, so far. But the one thing I've found is, you know, if I'm going – low outside on a ball to really pull it, uh, trying to get the most out of it. I don't have to go as far out with the tip. Mm -hmm. You so, want to say about a tip within center? Uh, I don't know about that. I'm not afraid to go a little Aren't further okay? out on it, but it, but I can go extreme sometimes on shots to where I don't have to adjust my aim as much as I just adjust my tip a little bit. Okay. There's your nice break. And the one thing I found out about you know, some of the technology, I was probably a little stubborn, uh, kind of in a dumb way to it, um, and I'll admit that, but uh, it almost, at least for me, and I really believe cues are for styles, and, and just like golf, um, meaning everyone's set up for clubs. Mm -hmm. You could say, oh, this club is the best, but it may not agree with that person's motion as much, right. or this shaft, or whatever it is in golf, but same thing in pool. Uh, the cue I've been messing with, I really believe it sets up and makes me to where when I swing my best, it actually agrees with that very okay. well, you know. So I know that's kind of confusing probably. But well, no, basically you, uh, what I heard was that you're saying uh, the cue is the, the cue that works best for your style. Yeah, exactly. It's better than it might be the top seller, you know, that everybody wants one, but it may not work for your style. Exactly right. Just like. I thought about it in the last match with Filler. Uh, of course, Filler with Predator and has done some amazing things there. And, and he tr he won a big tournament, I believe, with the with the Revo. But then again, he went back to the wood just because, you know, it kind of matched up with him a little bit better for now. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm, I don't know everything going on with Filler's equipment as far as the cues, but, um, you know, and maybe he's still toying around with trying to get that used to the, the carbon fiber, but. You know, I really believe, you know, you go with weight, you go with this, you know, you pick up your buddy's cue and he says, man, this is the greatest thing ever. And you pick it up and not saying it's something bad, but it just doesn't agree so with it's you. Not for me. Yeah, Correct. exactly. Which I think is great for the sport myself. Oh, he thought he'd play that right off the nine instead of, or did he just miss hit it? Um, He's going to have a. I think he probably thought it was dead. Mm -hmm. uh, kiss shot. Now Chris has won a game off of uh, some you know, mishap by Aronis, but he needs to have a nice clean one uh, of his own. Yeah, just a clean run out on his mm -hmm. own. Yeah, exactly. You know, get the cue ball where he wants, hit the pocket how he wants, make the strokes he wants. 
Shots that was like, better. Shots like that. That exactly. was better. Uh, this this really uh, looks nice, real kind of like a road map actually. I didn't want to use that uh, expression, but it's the only one I could think of. And he shouldn't come down too close to the seven ball. I'd want to stay above the seven quite a bit myself, um, especially with the nine being there. If you come down too much, it could get a little funny. Oh, uh, he went down there. Yeah. If he falls straight, he if he fell straight right there now, things are a little more difficult. He's got a little angle to go with top left, but. Away from the rail. You don't, I don't like land, landing on the rail like that. Well, that's, right. not, that's not too bad, but. Um, uh, uh, oof. Boy. The. Did he hit that nine ball? Or did no, he didn't it? hit it, he, but okay, he got close he crept to up close. So he yeah. shouldn't use that third rail here, I don't think. Just two rails down the table like this. Yeah, exactly. Make sure to avoid the side, the yeah. little inside. And there's that game you spoke of. Well. One on his own. He won the first game, then James rattled off three, and now he's got one back. And I believe he'll be breaking. Yeah, three to two. We've seen uh, a scratch on the break, and then a, he threatened the opposite side mm -hmm. pocket scratch. So Chris will be very aware of that. and Want to make sure he gets a little more head-on contact on the one. Good shot of the players, the arena, their equipment. Yeah, Diamonds, again, mm -hmm. put together eight beautiful tables for the pros to play on yeah. amongst the other 300 in the building. <laughs> and they're all Diamond 7-footers. Yeah. These are all brand-new Diamond 9-footers, eight, 9-footers. Eight, Chris, one of the few, of course, coming off of his English 8-ball background, breaking with an open bridge. And the funny thing is, I'm pretty sure he used the closed bridge in the first two. Uh, so probably taking a little bit off mm -hmm. uh, the speed there. I think he can make this. Can he throw it in? But the thing is, if he can throw it in, oh, no, he's looking to bank it around the table maybe. Or no, just it what I thought. He can't come back with the cue ball, so he's got to play from underneath the two. He's going forward with it. A little left. Oh, he's going to come back. Okay. I yeah. thought he might put a lot of spin on it and kind of go around it. Wow, well, did he get to a pocket here? He's got a natural position, so just just a little bit of a tester on the two in the side. Should hit a little bit before the side with the cue ball. I think, anyways. Mm. I don't like hitting this with just a natural high and going past the side with you, the cue ball. You might catch that little corner that sticks out about an inch. Well, that, believe it or not, but sometimes you don't get it to the hole. Yeah. The two ball. He, now he he, he went ahead and played it before with draw, which is correct. But he just uh, just a little off, right? To yeah. start our match. Yep. He's having. Let's see, he's not happy. He's a little concerned there. Because this young man at the table is not someone you want to make mistakes against. No, and I kind of felt like, of course, James is still improving, and he's really one of my favorite younger players to watch. Uh, really gets me in stroke watching him. But I kind of felt like, you know, commenting on many of his matches the last few years that he's still dealing with getting used to, like, the big settings, you know, mm -hmm. like, like a little, you know, in the tournament settings I'm talking about. Uh, not so much the action settings. Uh, right, right, because he gets plenty of action. Yeah, and that's, yeah. you know, one of his uh, attributes on getting better is staying in the box. But, And I still think it's gotten better, but I th still think he's getting used to the mm -hmm. big settings still. Uh, Something like this. Yeah. Like this uh, yeah. Uh, I'm surprised we don't have a full 
crowd for this match. This is a this is a premier match. Well, the amateurs are still uh, they're playing, and the yeah, teams aren't here. Exactly. Yeah. So once once the amateurs start to get eliminated a little bit more uh, from the events they're playing in, we'll definitely have some full stands. And you can see the outer. Look at the yes. outer yeah, as far as the spectators watching yeah. the outer tables. So when you have so many great matches going on. Yeah. Okay, he looks like he's going to roll past the 10 just barely instead of trying to check the cue ball up. Nice shot. But what I was saying is I think he's very capable of winning any of these tournaments now, but I think, you know, he's still improving. And once he settles in and gets that real comfort level in these mm -hmm. pro events, I think mm -hmm. you're going to really see James shine. Yeah, being comfortable is so important at the table. That's where you start seeing guys, you know, play like they practice. It's just that comfort zone is so important. Yeah, because we all know the talent level yes. when it comes to James. It's really up there. Uh, that's a little light. Yep. This is the shot you talked about when you when you have a tendency of leaving it out. Yeah, a tendency. At least he doesn't really have to play the cue mm -hmm. ball somewhere. Um, but that shot in particular, you know, of course he didn't want to leave himself there that, uh, you know, that time. Mm -hmm. But it's a very important shot to have in your repertoire from a lot of different places, meaning uh, a lot of times balls are in the way where you can't get on the good side of that ball and you have to play from behind it to get shape. And um, there's a lot of extreme angles that are, like I said, a good tool to be able to play from mm -hmm. uh, where sure. a lot of guys would make mistakes. But now four to two, and James can really get, you know, you, there's not a whole lot of a stranglehold when you talk about a race of seven with these guys, but, you know, five to two is a pretty good stranglehold mm -hmm. as far as w what these matches are lined up to be. Now see what I like about Kristen in his chairs. He's not looking around at the audience. He's not. He's doing what I watch some of the greats play. Guys like Efren. They'll sit there and they'll just keep their eye on the table. Mm -hmm. On the table. That's their world right now. You know, 500. Uh, is it 50? 50 by 100 inches, or that's 5,000 square inches that are on the table. Just keep your eye right there and stay focused. Yeah, and I'll tell you that. I always used to watch just the cue ball mainly, mm -hmm. uh, of course the table, but mm -hmm. but that involves the table uh, um, really dialing in the speed on things and mm -hmm. and just kind of gets you in a little bit of a trance for the game. But uh, well, that zone we talk about, right? Yeah, and yeah. you know, um, he can see this ball, correct? So he's just got to come up and play a two-four like combination. Is that right? Yeah. It looks like he can see it. Yeah, yeah he oh, can yeah. see it, no problem. Yeah. So. Talk about it all the time when I teach, uh, George. Is, you know, you're not going to get much information from your opponent. And the, at this moment, we don't have caddies in our corner. I think mm -hmm. it's actually going to come one day, some type of ring uh, corner man. But um, so the only thing that really talks to you in this game and gives you information is the table itself. The table and the cue uh, ball. Yeah. How it's uh, reacting. Yeah. Same thing. Like really express it in one pocket a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Uh, that the table really tells you more of what your shot is. Ooh, man. Oh, very light there. Wow. Yep. Now watch when we get zoned in on those uh, on those balls again. You'll see the reflections from these lights. Well, I'm wondering what we're going to do here as far as do we just run into the seven, run into the nine? You're stretched, so it's not a shot, especially with an extension, more weight that you want to put heavy side spin on and try and float by these balls. You know, it's because, you know, it could easily deflect into a little thick hit with that extra weight on there. So maybe yeah. go into the nine with the cue ball. Yeah, it's not going to get there. He tried to play that floater shot more. Hard to do stretched out, and like you said, with that added weight on the cue. Mm -hmm. Your tip has a tendency of moving around. And a huge game if you're a Chris Milling fan, I'll tell you oh, that. Sure. Like you just spoke of it. You don't want to go down 5 2, but 4, four 2 is manageable, and 4 3 is much more manageable. Yeah, 4 3 is pretty much on. 
on serve. Mm -hmm. Well, he'll be breaking. And like you said, right on serve. Well, it seems like he's worked his way back in. Yeah, and very surprising under hit from the five to the six there from Aranis. Shane Van Boning, who was up two to nothing to start. Now Lechner with four in a row. Uh, ahead four to two on Captain America. Captain America. <laughs> Uh, Mika's head is right in the way of his score. It's uh, Ko has four. I'm not sure what, how many games uh, Mika has. Okay, we'll see what Chris does with the break here. If he goes back to the see, now he's gone back to the closed bridge. So mm -hmm. that tells me he's going to hit him with more. More umph. I think so. A little bit and more. There goes anyways. the three right in like the pocket. Perfect Beautiful break cue there. Ball. Beautiful cue ball. What a nice break. And really a road map because oh, yeah. uh, he's made three on the break. And really the one gets easily to the four. The six has got some work. But where he's at, he sh it should be very doable. Yeah, that six on the side there works real well, yeah. Yeah, and it's easy to pull off the four behind the six, especially with this natural yeah. angle to get behind it like this. So. Well, actually that match over there, Mika is within one of Little Co. It's 4-3. Meanwhile, oh, Chris rattles that. And that's just a timing issue, uh, meaning I, there's no way he's aiming poorly from there. I mm -hmm. mean, the guys just don't do that. So they're just delivering the cue with a little more speed. Uh, you don't figure a big miss hit on the cue ball. So what happens is you put a little low left, you deflect into it a little thicker with that little more speed. Um, so, yeah, it's just timing right now for, for Chris. may have to let this out here. Yeah, and just uh, make a dig underneath the seven and come up? I think so. Yeah. The good thing about the, the the pros is they really know they don't have, it's more about a clean strike that makes it pull very easily. And then it comes slowly into position. So you really don't get in too much trouble if you happen to over hit the ball. Just like that. Yeah, nice shot. You got a lot on that ball. But you see the last three feet, how the cue ball is coming in slowly. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a good way to learn what good timing is and, and tempo. Okay. Um, cue ball shouldn't be racing in there. Just going to fall forward for the seven on the side. No, he went all the way down. Yep. Now, will you go to the rail on this and come back out? I think so, yeah. yeah. Think so as long as I'm not pushing it, meaning mm -hmm. I have to cheat the pocket or anything like that. And that's pretty perfect yeah. there. He has a, a choice, most likely just, you know, long draw stroke out. Mm -hmm. Again, imagine this coming out slowly, George. That's when you get your timing down better. Okay. Don't worry. You're going to draw the ball. You don't want it flying like, all over the table, just right? Just like that. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, you yeah. don't want it flying into the side pocket. Yeah, especially. Well, yeah. People worry about the draw is what mm -hmm. happens, and they get real quick with the stroke, and, you know, you know and what it, happens from there. Sure, and a lot of people think that you have to drive through it uh, to get that stroke. Yeah. Because they're afraid to deliver just the stroke itself. So they kind of force it. Well, it's a lot of those little things you say to yourself that really work against you. Oh, let me make sure I get there. And that adds that extra speed that's really unnecessary and causes actually a lot of problems. Uh, let me draw it all the way back. You know, mm -hmm. things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. so little now, pep talks you give yourself during the stroke. Which are actually bad things, you know. So. Well, as long as you're thinking during the shot, it's a bad thing. Well, yeah, true that. But I always tell people, you know, if you need to draw the ball, do you think you're just going to, like, dink the ball? No, your mind's going to allow speed to happen. It knows speed, it speed's required to draw the ball, so it shouldn't be so much worry. Because we know it's a psychological game, right? Mm-hmm. 
Well, folks, uh, you, you see the scores there, Fargo ratings down beneath their names, and then you see the percentages change uh, as we go on for each game. Um, we are now, I think, once you see that, well, you said 80, 86 and 14%. That's not going to change. That's exactly where we're at. We're at 5-3. I thought, I thought the score was still waiting for that one to pick up, but they put it up there real quick, which okay. is good. And James, again, I don't think he'll back off. He had real good success his last two going in and hitting the balls. Yeah. What a nice view of him breaking the ball in the cue delivery right through his uh, bridge, bridge hand. That was just a, a, a good uh, good view of well, everything taking place. You know, I've played a lot of tournaments where guys use a softer break to try and make one and guarantee that shot on the one ball. And it seems to me if, if you really got it down, look what he's making. He's making three on the break. He's really getting the traffic out of the way that can snooker him on the one, believe it or not. And he's doing and hitting the ball more like he wants. So there's a, a rhyme and reason to both of those types of breaks, the lighter one that's a little more controlled. But I also think it, it you have to work a lot more through the rack. So you think about, what, 128-man board that you have to win a lot of matches, mm -hmm. uh, which, which makes for a lot of games played. All right, he's going to cut this. Speed is crucial, though, because the five does not pass the nine. So he's got to have good speed going back and forth. Got to make sure he ends up. He does. I think it's perfect. It's perfect, yeah. yeah. And those are nice shots to practice to get that speed down to, to hit those three rails. Well, he's still falling a little funny because he where the eight's at. Does he want to play short side on the eight? That's very easy. But he'd rather be able to get above the eight here. So playing this five ball to get on the seven, he may have to th threaten going forward. Just use the eight to bump you into shape. Well, now he may have gotten to where he can go top inside English mm -hmm. to get on the eight. He's not taking much time, so that tells me that's playable. So James Aranis is going to put himself in the prime position. He's going to have it. If he gets out here, he'll have two of his own breaks uh, to win the match, plus two of Chris's to win the match on all, as well. Mm. Can't ask for any more than that. No. If I'm in a match, this is where I want to be. Yeah, absolutely. the hill yeah on the hill and just talked about in a great position and I think there's a little anxiety in this race of seven for these guys uh, you can see a, a few mistakes that you wouldn't you wouldn't imagine happening like you know, the missed four ball a moment ago by mm -hmm. Chris uh, you know this week we have you know somewhere between five and seven thousand players coming into the Rio to uh, play in this tournament and, you know, we are taking precautions. CSI is taking precautions with wiping down tables and things after every match. Oh, yeah. Uh, to, to keep things a uh, little tidier, tidier. And here at the Rio, they're doing all kinds of uh, every protective precaution, measures. Yeah. Every precaution. So. Yeah, uh, nothing slowing down here. Nothing slowing help. down. Come on out to the Rio. Enjoy some of this atmosphere, some of these players. I mean, you have championship matches on all eight tables. Mm -hmm. It's just... Uh, Okay, he's, can he float this in and hold the one to where he can still shoot the one in the corner? I don't think he can hold it for the side. I think the one has to cut a little bit to make the seven. And therefore, the cue ball going away from from the one ball. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't play it hard, though. Okay, not bad. It must have been more cut than, more cut than, than we, we imagined, thought, yeah. yeah. So he should keep this simple here. I don't think he'll play the combination. He'll just bank the one back up, go in and carry the cue ball into the 10, and, let, and just play with the 3, 9, and the 5 as a safety. The only thing that would go wrong is pocket the 10. Yeah. 
I don't think he'll hit it hard enough to do so, but maybe. Yeah, yeah. Nice shot. Nice shot there. So we'll see Chris make his first jump shot of, the tr of this match. It's an awful close one. He's got to be in the air a long way and up over the three. Yeah, he's got a piece of the 10 to get over. Yeah. So yeah. this one will be hopping a few times. He made Cleared it. it. Yeah. And, but was it enough? He's left a tough shot, yeah. at least an offensively a tough shot. Easy safety, though. You can see that. You can clip the one a bunch of different ways and get behind... Uh, the Get three, the five, six, and nine. Let's see how he chooses to do this. Going to the rail, try to get down by the I tent. might bank it back down again. Yeah. That's what I thought he would do. Right between the, the four and the, or between the four and the two and bring the cube all over. Mm-hmm. He That's didn't get there. No, he le he's left a window. Chris has a full ball, it looks like. Great shot Chris there. got there. Wow. Chris is thinking to himself, jump this. And he'll go to the side. Kick straight at it. Would you, if you had your druthers and ten wasn't there, would you go two rails to kick this or one? Uh, probably two for mm -hmm. sure, mm -hmm. just because the hit's easier too. Sure, yeah, he's gonna go around and go three. Yeah, yeah. that's just because he's cut off. What a good hit that was. He's gonna get rewarded. Yes, he's gonna spin back towards the nine. There you go. Wow. Well, he can go for a two-way here. I believe the maybe the one banks between the six ten, and he, he can, can play yeah, yeah stick him up on top of them balls. Yeah, right. Be put him right between the three and the nine would be just devastating. I think he's just going to go for the devastating lock up here instead of yeah, trying to exactly. call the shot. And this is going to be a tough one here. This is a Chris Melling special. <laughs> Thus, the title magician. Can he pull a rabbit out of his hat here? Yeah. It's there. He's got to do, but he's got to come over the nine, two rails into the one. He's got a window between the five, six. So he's looking at it from a different avenue. He's going four rails, four rails up rails underneath, underneath the it. one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Attention. And we are playing all ball files. We have a presiding referee, so. He's got to be careful not to touch a ball. It will be a foul. Hard to get a rail even if you do hit it. You got to put a lot of speed on this. Yeah, it was tough. Imagine that went went five <laughs> rails in between all them balls. Right into the side pocket. Yeah, so he should open the three up with ball in hand here somehow. I'm not exactly sure how just yet, but I don't. Maybe the three goes in the side, opposite side. Yeah, just bump the five into the three. I think with some there. speed, yeah. I think that's fine. I mean, go ahead and rip draw. Not rip draw, but go ahead. Yeah. Oh, oh. Well, I will say the three does go right to the same pocket that the two goes to. Let me see. I think it goes right by that nine. It may mm, not go by yeah, the nine. It's pretty tough from here. For a second, I thought it would, it would go right by there, but... He can just kind of pull over and play it in the side. He's going to play for that gap? Yeah. Oh, he's, he's gotten perfect, it. I yeah, think. He's found it. And just probably have to draw into an edge of this one of these two balls, whether that, or maybe both. He looks real straight, so as long as he gets it past the five, he'll have a steep cut on the four, but he'll be able to get there. I don't think he's coming all the way back. 
Yeah, that's just all he needed. Oof. This is tough, tough, though. This is tough, yeah. But he was straight in where he couldn't. Ideally, he'd, I'd like to sit there and, and bump the five with that draw. And but it, he it, couldn't. But he couldn't. Yeah, his angle didn't permit it. So he's a little elevated because he's getting, he's wanting to hit this with a little right English mm -hmm. to go back towards them balls. Mm -hmm. Still should be okay. I, he just may have to play safe on the five. I think he's going to. Oh, wow. He got a lot out of that. Nice shot. Well, maximum Lechner shooting at the six ball with the six, seven, eight, nine, ten left to go up six to three on Shane Van Boning. That's a nice way to say that things aren't looking good for Shane. Well, I'll tell you, you know, Shane, I haven't seen him really make a mistake. I haven't got to watch the entire mm -hmm. matchup. Oh, talk about a mistake. Did oh wow. What do you think they kick these in at? 15, 20% maybe? I would say 10%. a third of the time, maybe. That much? Yeah. Wow. A third of the time? <laughs> well, a nine ball, that would have been good. Now, will he get this back? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> See, if I'm playing a, a mid-level player, I don't know. I might give that back. These guys? No. <laughs> yeah, down six to three. I Oh, and now down six to three, you have I to shoot. I don't see a scratch. I can't give up. A I think he's yeah. dodging both scratches going offensive. Is he looking at a safety? I, I don't know if I heard him call anything. Yeah, he played safe. He played the safe. Yeah. And that's some discipline there. If he was sitting on a scratch, uh, most people down. They just try to beat the. Yeah, when yeah. you're down six to three, of course, yeah, you're going to try and. Okay, a little subtle swerve to kick behind this. A or two small. rail, two rail, okay. Uh, two rail. I just saw a little glint in uh, Chris's eye like, uh, well, at least I got this done. And he's happy about the results there. And James will be breaking at six to four if Chris gets out here, but. Oh, it's got to come some. Oh, just did. There's still a light on for Chris Melling. The only thing is he is a dangerous player about to break the balls. <laughs> Uh, have we had a break and run this match? I think just one. Yeah, I know. I, I, I know James did once. Mm -hmm. uh, he made three on the break and had a nice, nice, nice layout, do, doable run out. Well, Shane just missed a two ball at six to three. He may have gotten a, a snooker, but it's hanging in the hole. So you know how well these guys kick. It's deep in the hole though. So, but yeah, that's. So it doesn't look good for SVB at the moment. But he is one of the most amazing comeback players also I've seen. Look at that cue ball. Yeah. He parked it in the middle of the table. Oh, what a good shot. And he's going to have to play a tricky position shot from the one to the two. And not only that, he's, it's a little thin on the one, so you can't take your eye off of that. You can't play it like the one's a hanger. I'd like to get back where he's at right now. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a great drill that I tell people. Um, you want to get comfortable with your stroke and speed control and stuff. A lot of times, how often does it come up in a game to where you say, man, I'd love to have the cue ball exactly where I'm at right now for my next exactly. shot. Exactly. Yeah, I think I, I was with Joey, and, or maybe it was you, and I made that comment. I said, I, I'd say it's just a high percentage of the time you want to be right where you're at when you're shooting. Mm -hmm. If I can just get it right back there where I'm at. Does he lock him up here behind the six and the nine, it playing the two nice. over? No. It lays nice, but he's cueing inside so he can cool. make it. He's playing the cut. Didn't get it. And so, oh, oh, and that, oh, and and that kiss is going to kill him. And again, the heavy spin shot. Um, he hasn't missed every one of them, but it seems like that one's that's the one that you know is a little bit bothersome to him still. Mm -hmm. 
think he's only now been with Predator just a few weeks. It looks like that's a Z shaft. I thought I heard him say 314. Okay, so Chris again in position to get out here. Cut at 6-5 and we'll be breaking off in game number 12. Get straight here. Yeah, he's straight. He's gonna have a little, little hard time he getting the cue ball. He might power draw ramp. this ball here. Chris doesn't mind uh, like bringing it. Oh, that's gonna catch the ten. That's not gonna get up high enough. Yeah, and you can't depend on the side spin though with the newer felt. But you can fire it into the bank shot and get on the eight. Strong shot there. Chris says, I may have started out with two scratches, but I'm also finishing up with two games in a row. Oops, I, sorry I put that on James, no wonder. No, that was wrong on me. 6-5. Six, 6-5. Five. Six, five. Oh, I made a mess of my own score. <laughs> well, guys here at the CSI, did a fine job of keeping things together. Now, Chris's last break was much different, much lighter, and had a big cluster of balls right right around the racking area. Let's see what he decides here. He went to the closed bridge, so probably a little more pop in it this time. All right, nothing so far. And, oh. Well, oh, thank you, two ball. That's what that, Chris is thinking. I think that ball's even real tough to get in behind and kind of kick and mm -hmm. stick as well. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> Kick it real soft. Pass uh, the two and leave the cue ball up against the two. Yeah, probably. Hmm. All right, he's kicking and sticking with draw, and I think that's more of what I like. You should hold it pretty easy, and you might really pin it. Oh, he let up on a stroke. Kicking and hitting this with all that congestion of balls right there. Probably going to get safe. Mm -hmm. This percentages to me say that more than likely, probably not going to leave a shot. I'd like to roll on this if I could. Yeah, I was going to say, if you hit it hard, you might make a ball. But uh, you want to roll this like you said. Just well, it's, I, I think hitting down with a little speed is a little more comfortable way to shoot it. But I think as far as getting safe, you may not get a rail rolling on top of it. But I think that's a better way to, for good things yeah, to happen. You, you know. That last bump might have helped. I think he's given up a shot. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think he's got to go with the jump cue or rail first. And you know, Chris really excels at the rail first shots. So you've seen him do escape some a lot of jail going <laughs> rail first. For a lot of you uh, people out there, you saw how he measured that. Yeah, that's the it's old Jimmy old Reed system. system. Yeah. Is that yeah. what it is? Yeah, yeah. It's not, yeah. I know it's a good system. Seems to work, but it's still, it's still, uh, you have to factor in the newness of the cloth and the speed of the hit. Is that who uh, devised that? Or yeah, that's yeah, the okay. Jimmy Reed. He came out okay. with it in the, uh, I believe, it was early 90s, yeah. mid, early to mid-90s, with it, some of his instructional. A lot of people don't know how great a player that guy was. I didn't get to see him fully in his prime, but I saw him have some flashbacks. Uh, and, of course, I know his credentials, uh, World mm -hmm. Nine Bowl Champion, World Ten Bowl Champion, World Eight Bowl Champion. Whoa. 
Uh, Jimmy Reed was one one great player. Very unique style too with the stroke. Did you ever get to see Jimmy play? No, Any? I no. didn't. No, not at all. Hall of Famer. Okay, this is a. If he can get to the back rail, he just wants to hit any portion of the right side with like a mild medium trying to get the snooker right there. Just yeah. like that. That's now he caught it out. too good. It's going to come out. He caught it right on the nose. If he, It cuts a little more, any less portion of the one on that side. He really gets the cue ball much more underneath mm -hmm. the 4-9. Yeah, he got in too far, uh, too far behind it. Might go into the seven here. I know that sounds crazy, but oh, he could get past it and not have to flirt with the five. I thought he had to flirt with the eight and the five mm -hmm. right there. Well, the four ball is still something to be. Uh, I try to come two rails out to the other side of the three here. Oh, he came to that side, and now very difficult to get mm -hmm. behind the four. The four went to the upper left. If he played the three in the other corner from above, he could get behind the four. <clears throat> now having to just track the cue ball some ways just to play safe on the four. Is yeah. that right, George? Yeah, he's got to do something with it. He, does, he doesn't have an angle to go towards it unless oh. he's trying to get around. He's just going to. I was thinking maybe it banks cross side if he wanted to play it. Uh, I think it does if he wanted to because he's got kind of funny on the safety, in my yeah. opinion. With the side pocket there, very difficult to chop on the four down to the end rail below the six or something like that. I think he's going for the bank. Good call. Trade call. Now another funny shot. He's got to go just by the ten one rail coming back for the six, but not. he can't dig on the cue ball too much. He might get into the ten. This is one there's not really a great route. You just got to kind of trust your feeling coming across those balls. It's coming across. Well, Chris made a pretty good effort and actually looked like he was starting to get a little more comfortable mm -hmm. with things, but... When you fall behind, you know, you kind of are asking uh, for a lot of help to get back in these matches against, you know, always great players that are in front of you, playing, you know, trying to beat you. So. Now James gave him his opportunities at the beginning of the match. I doubt that he gives him one here. Mm -hmm. James got down to the last two balls the first two games. Well, Chris will have to regroup and play a little better moving forward on the one loss side. He knows that, and I'm sure he'll do that. And I think James, too. James is going to look to put a little practice in. and Wow. That's a little short. Yeah. And, and uh, again, we see it. A lot short. He doesn't even have the intended pocket, I don't believe, uh, yeah. from there. But he hit it heavy to the hole, but that's another one. No reason to go just 12 inches by that ball. Uh, go ahead, go, inches, go yeah. three feet by that yeah. ball, two and a half yeah. feet. Yeah. Uh, that's just trying to be too perfect. Exactly, yeah. taking it a little for granted. Are right, he's still spinning it in. So watch out, side pocket, two rails. Okay. Hit it. Great shot. And James wins seven to five. Well, thanks, ladies and gentlemen. George and I will be back here shortly. Who do we have coming up? Um, we have Tyler Steyer and Nayuki Oi. Yeah, should be a fine one at the 4 o'clock round. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. <laughs> 